Most people think hypertrophy is just for bodybuilders, but I'm here to tell you hypertrophy is also for endurance cyclists. Hypertrophy allows for bigger muscles, and bigger muscles allow for better durability and efficiency on the bike. So let's get into how blood hypertrophy really means. Hi, I'm Coach Sierra. I've researched and made a four-part series focused on weightlifting and the key parts of it if you want to successfully build into base season and prepare for next year. This four-part series will focus on hypertrophy, strength, power, and maintenance. Super important to know what the difference is between these phases so you can optimize your weightlifting in the gym. If you want to hear about each phase, subscribe and keep your eyes open for this four-part series on this YouTube channel. And please leave a comment or a like if you have any questions so I can address them throughout the series. As a coach, it's really important for me to understand the exercise physiology behind each thing that I prescribe to my athletes. Hypertrophy is a fancy word for muscle growth. Think of it like your muscles are balloons. So we have the same amount of balloons. We're not adding any more balloons. We're just making those balloons denser and bigger, and we're inflating them over time by prescribing the correct strength training. In the balloon analogy, the muscle is actually becoming more dense, so you're adding more muscle fibers to an already made muscle. You're basically just improving the machinery of the muscle. There are a couple important factors for muscle growth, and we're going to dive into those now. The first important factor to hypertrophy is focusing in on the total work volume that you're doing. According to this article published in 2021, it's actually best to achieve this work volume through a variety of loads. So in the purpose of purely hypertrophy, you do not need to lift heavy every single time. You can actually have a variety of light, moderate to heavy loads and then switch up how many repetitions you are doing for each of those loads to get as close as you can to failure. Now, we don't want to get too close because you're not trying to injure yourself in the gym, but you want to max out that muscle, basically, in order to create hypertrophy and force those adaptations to occur. So specifically in this 2021 article, they honed in on two other articles, and these two articles really hyperfixated on showing how a variety of loads is actually best. The amount of reps you do also depends on how comfortable you are at the gym. So if you're a beginner, you can do less reps, maybe more the light moderate range of load or if you're custom to the gym you're an expert you can do heavier load higher rep even it's basically just dependent on you as an individual the second most important thing to hypertrophy is just getting enough carbs and protein in the diet basically you have two things happening here muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown so muscle protein synthesis can really only overpower breakdown if you are intaking enough protein to accommodate for the stress that you are putting on the muscle during your strength training. Specifically, proteins rich in leucine will really help flip that switch from breakdown into synthesis. And that's just because leucine is an amino acid that really helps with muscle protein. So a simple rule for cyclists that are lifting is to have about one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. And that's going to be really important when you're doing the strength training phase, because like I said, we really want to focus it on that growth of the muscle. You don't need to chug protein. It should be pretty easy relatively to get protein in com compared to other things like maybe trying to get in 100 grams of carbs per hour on the bike when you're racing. That's probably a little bit harder. If we want to look at that in kilograms, that would be about 1.4 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. If we're going to look at what foods have this leucine amino acid, it would be chicken breast, eggs, whey protein, if you're more of a plant-based athlete, tofu, edamame, quinoa, soy milk, soy products. You can achieve it as a plant-based athlete or as a full dietary. This article that I talked about earlier from 2021 also talked about the interference effect that's been commonly talked about throughout literature. Basically, it found that cycling doesn't really interfere with strength training as much as running does. As a coach, what I prescribe is if you have a zone two day, you can do the lifting prior to your zone two. If you have a heavy intervals day, I would do the intervals before the lifting. Typically that wouldn't occur during a hypertrophy phase. So if we're focusing on hypertrophy, you're probably just getting back on the bike. So lifting should generally be first in this phase, and then we can get on the bike and add zone two. Or something that I also tell my athletes that are more crunch for time is having a little bit zone two before their workout and a little bit of zone two after their lifting workout in order to really build volume per week. The bottom line really with hypertrophy is 
creating enough workload to have a stimulant that's strong enough to create muscle growth. The second key thing is focusing in on protein during this hypertrophy phase because we're really working the muscles hard and we want to make sure that we're creating muscle growth and not living in a phase of muscle breakdown. And you can do this by really focusing in on the types of proteins that you're intaking in your diet and also just getting enough protein in general. During hypertrophy phase, the load doesn't matter as much as reaching near failure. So like I said, light, moderate, heavy load is totally fine, but we just want as much reps as we can get with the load that you've selected as an app. And when you pair this workload at the gym with an adequate diet, there should be no nuanced activity in between that we don't know about that would prevent muscle growth over time. In the next video, we'll focus more on the strength phase, and that is where heavy lifting will become more important. If you want help with your weightlifting or you have any questions about hypertrophy cell, please leave a comment below. We'll get to it in the next video. And feel free to hop on FastCat and follow one of our strength plans. The 10-week weightlifting plan is a big one that really hones in on this hypertrophy phase as well as our 30-week off-season plan. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.